All right, so today we're going to dive into a response video to Marquez Brownlee. You might know him as MKBHD. Now, what Marquez did was he jumped into the Solana phone. So we're going to break it down, give you guys some insights, and maybe give you a second opinion here. I think you'll like it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into TechPath. Let's go over to Marquez's YouTube page. And as you'll notice here, Marquez Brownlee, uh, 17.4 million subscribers right now. And he did this phone review right here, which of course, many of you will recognize this. If you're on our channel, maybe you're brand new to understanding what's happening. You just searched out something and you thought, hey, uh, this is a Solana phone. What is that? He got 1.2 million video views on this in about 18 hours. So when you look at the impact on Solana and also the impact, I think, on Web3, Marquez actually has a lot to say here. So we're going to break down some clips for you. Let's go to this first one. Take a look. Now, I know I have been notably uh, skeptical on crypto and Web3 and blockchain and the metaverse and all that sort of stuff over the past couple of years. So you may consider me biased. But I still think if you took the crypto out of this phone, it would at least have potential for one specific crypto stack, one that happens to also be tanking pretty hard and has been tanking for months. This becomes the perfect embodiment of crypto in 2023, at best ahead of its time. All right, so, I mean, he hit on a lot of things here. First of all, I agree with him when it comes to the device itself. The hardware is, I would say, a, a middle-of-the-road, run-of-the-mill hardware. That, and that's not really the advantage of what the Saga brings to a user or to an owner of it. We'll break down a lot of what that is. Before we go there, getting into who this phone is for and then understanding the real strengths of it is... Most of the time is pretty typical of a Marquez Brownlee review. It just did not exist here. I think he really weighed heavily on the hardware side of it. And that I think was the undoing of really giving the saga, but more importantly, Web3 a chance. I wanna clip over to this next uh, clip right here of J I Just Hate, listen in. Now, one of the problems that I've run into, and if you are also into NFTs or crypto, is how difficult and not secure things are to transact on mobile. Now, most of the time you do need a desktop or you need to have a wallet app browser, and it's super frustrating to try to navigate. And it's also not entirely secure. Now, what I do like about the Saga is that they're introducing a seed vault. So your Solana private keys and seeds are stored securely protected by a dedicated hardware security module called a secure element. I like this because you actually own your assets and you can transfer or sell them if you want. I kind of think of this when I was playing Animal Crossing, but my entire island that I've spent 1700 hours playing and building, if that was something that was on the blockchain, I would be able to easily transfer that entire island to someone else. And each one of those assets Sets wouldn't just be something that I would have in the game. It would be something that I physically, well, digitally owned and would be able to do whatever I wanted with them. Now, if there was some other game that was on that particular blockchain that also decided to share those same assets, I could then take those assets into, I don't know, for example, if it's Call of Duty, I could maybe take some of my wardrobe, the outfits that I had made or created in Animal Crossing or purchased, and I could wear them in Call of Duty. So I'm going to be either going up with this ship or I'm going to be going down with it. I like the fact that, uh, first of all, th that's exactly right. The Solana phone is for a person like I just teen, someone who is a gamer, someone who is into digital assets, someone who's looking at the next generation of digital privacy and digital ownership. You know, here's Unbox Therapy. Just to give you guys a size capacity, that's 20 million subs right there on Unbox Therapy. Lou does a great job. And you go back to Marquez, you know, we'll go up to his channel right here, 17 million subs right there. And then over here to iJustine, also another tech reviewer, iJustine at 7 million. So you can imagine the kind of damage that tech reviewers that have this much authority and influence can do. And it doesn't mean that they shouldn't because they should be able to review these devices, give honest opinions, and be able to come up with a solution that maybe can help you. And I think that's the missing part here. All right, so I want to go to this next clip real quick and uh, listen in to this one. There's basically three things that make this a crypto phone instead of just another regular Android phone. It's the Solana mobile stack, the Seed Vault, and the dApp store. 
So the Solana mobile stack is an SDK for apps to connect to the Solana blockchain, which I mean, it's cool that it's built in, but the obvious downside being this does not work with any other blockchain. So no Bitcoin, no Litecoin, no Ethereum. This is just focused on the Solana blockchain. Now, price is another thing that comes into play. And I agree again with what Marquez said here, but listen into his uh, response on price. A thousand dollars. And uh, that's this phone right here. Does any of this justify a thousand dollar price tag? <laughs> Not really worth a thousand bucks, right? So that's why literally less than a year after it came out, the price plummeted from a thousand to $600. So now the real question is, would you pay, would anybody pay $600 for a barely above average, well-built Android phone that happens to have some crypto features built in? You can get a lot more phone for 600 bucks for the same price you could get a Pixel 7 or probably a Pixel 8 by the time it comes out. All right, so just to be clear on this, again, and back to the previous clip there, when he was talking about Ethereum and Bitcoin, yes, Bitcoin, not, why would you need that on there? There's not really a, a use case for Bitcoin on a, on a device like that. However, Ethereum, yes, there is and can be used within the Solana ecosystem. So that's, again, just another scenario. Now, price-wise, the value of these phones drop very quick, very fast. In many cases, a lot of these phones end up being, you know, giveaways on plans that go through the systems, whether it's AT&T, Mobile, T-Mobile, et cetera. One thing about Solana, if you follow them and when they released the saga, they only needed to get, I think, to about 15,000 or 20,000 phones total. That was like the ecosystem that would make this a successful launch. And that would give them enough data and enough examples of how use cases within the DAP store and also within the wallet aspect of what this phone brings to Web3 to start to really see new development start to occur. And that's when I think we'll start to see the leap forward in other technology. I wanna to go to this next one because this starts to bridge the gap on the value of this phone, not at just the price alone. Listen in. And something that comes with the Solana DAP store, something that we haven't seen any other app store do because the Solana uh, DAP Store allows you to have this direct relationship with consumers, you can do new things, like reward them. So we're introducing the Saga Genesis token. It's an NFT that establishes that they are a Saga user. And because we can establish that relationship, um, we're going to give them rewards. They'll immediately get uh, 20 USDC and a small amount of Sol to get them started on their journey. But we aren't stopping there because this is an open platform. So this is open to any DAP, and they're already taking advantage. So you can expect to see uh, exclusive sticker packs from folks like Dialect, plus not being on a, getting you off a wait list, a $25 credit from Magic Eden, exclusive mints of 2,000 new, brand new claimosaurs, and many more. Um, so we're excited because this is the first time that you actually get rewarded for using your phone. It's the phone that keeps on giving. A scenario that plays out for all phone makers in the future, and that is figuring out utility, use case, and value within an ecosystem. And that's where I think Solana is doing some interesting things. So right here was the pass that they were talking about, just the Saga pass when you buy one of these phones. Then you go into other, other scenarios right here. Uh, this was the Saga pass cards. These were just some of the cards, again, that you got and will continue to get additional uh, values out of this. And as partnerships start to come in, this is where these, because remember, each one of these cards, each one of these NFTs, each one of these assets, whether it's a whitelist scenario plays into this or others, especially as we start to see more partnerships and more use cases really start to move into the Web3 ecosystem, that's where Solana's value and where the value of the saga becomes very interesting because now you're getting paid essentially to have this device. There is nothing else out there like that on the market at all. The real secret mission though, I think that is here, is the fact that this is going to bridge the gap into digital ID, and digital ID is you own and manage all of your assets, including your own personal identification, as opposed to Facebook, Twitter, Apple, et cetera, owning you right now. And that's the way it is today. Further into this, I want to get in and just show uh, some of the things you could have got. This is kind of an interesting aspect of this particular phone. 
This is a, get, with every of one of these phones, you get a device bound, device bound, non transferable NFT, which is the Genesis token, which is in itself is kind of a unique technology. And as you start to understand the NFT market, you're going to understand that utility is going to be one of the killer apps of the future. And when you have that kind of use case, built into hardware technology, along with wallet, security, digital ID, the future of how mobile computing will be done really starts to change things up quite a bit. Further into this, here was Magic, Magic Eden. If you have a Solana Saga, there's 25 USDC waiting for you. Set up your Saga Genesis token, sign in, and then head over to the Rewards Hub and claim. Uh, Bonk was, of course, airdrop direct, directly into the Saga and the pre-orders. Here was Solana Mobile. This was another advantage, uh, concluding the first mint on Clanosaurs, one of the hottest NFTs out there right now. And again, this will only continue to grow. And I think this is where the value of that phone keeps ticking down after where it, whether you think about that retail price tag, if you bought one when, in, when it was a thousand bucks, it's probably a different, you're a different kind of buyer than anybody out there because you're a, a crypto native and that value to you is much greater than the thousand dollar price tag of that phone. But the $600 phone buyer, maybe is a little different buyer. And now they're starting to look at true value. So imagine all those value points that have been added to the Solana phone over time here, and it starts to just chip away and it continues to add to it. So that to me is a pretty cool thing. And if you just look at current value of uh, Clan of Swords right there, I mean, they're at 17, uh, 17 soul right now, soul trading at around, you know, anywhere between uh, 19 and 21 bucks. So not bad. So here was a tweet from Solana Mobile. It's been said before, Saga is the phone that keeps on giving over the past few weeks. Uh, we've got 100 whitelist spots across the hottest NFT mints on Solana just for Saga users. Take a look at the whitelist spots and uh, we've given away so far. I don't know how to say it any better. It just, have you known any other, any other mobile company, any other mobile device, any other technology company that just keeps on delivering like that in the sense of, Here's more value. Here's a new partner. Here's more value. Here's a new partner. Here's more value. That I just have not seen. And that to me is uh, what I think starts to lay the path and the groundwork for how other device makers could kind of go in this direction in the future. All right. So last up here is just the Helium Mobile Network. This again gives you the benefit of earning soul tokens on the Helium, Helium as part and has transferred over to the Solana blockchain. They also whitelisted you as a Saga holder and you would end up getting a fixed rate for the life of that Saga ownership. So that again is another value that this represents. Now back to the point of Apple, you know, because you think about other, eventually other device makers might go in this direction or they could go the other direction, which is to take, take, take from you. Try to sell you the next new device. Try to, you know, jump in and continue to to have you upgrade your phones and things of that nature. Apple was fined 27 million for slowing down iPhones without telling users. This to me was a drop in the bucket. What a great deal for them. They only got charged 27 million, but sold you billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of new phones because you thought your iPhone just wasn't performing when in reality, it was Apple under the hood slowing it down you know, to keep it efficient on the ecosystem. Apple's getting ready to go out with their iPhone 15 and most likely, we'll probably see all of our Apple 12, iPhone 12s, 13s, and 14s. Who knows what will happen to those in terms of performance? But this is the kind of problem you have with closed gardens. It's the problem you have with a non-open source opportunity here. And when you look at kind of the vision of where this is going, I want to play a clip here because this is a good one to kind of end this on. Listen in. I went into YouTube on my phone and I logged into an account that does not have YouTube Premium. The cost for one month of YouTube Premium when you sign up on your iPhone, $19 a month. If you sign up from your computer, from a browser, the cost per month is $14. That means if you sign up to YouTube Premium from your phone, you are paying $5 extra a month just so YouTube, just so Google can cover the fees that iOS, that Apple adds on top of it. So if you're signed up via your phone, stop it. <laughs> Are you getting this yet, people? Are you getting the picture where this is all going? Eventually, they want to control. When I say they, the wall gardens, the non-open source device makers, 
the people that are essentially doing the things, the antics that they've been doing to us for a long time. I'm, I'm sitting here in an Apple ecosystem because they've made it so difficult to detach away from it. It was for the first time now I'm carrying a Samsung device instead of an Apple ecosystem device. And it's not because I don't like the Apple ecosystem. I do like it. I just don't like the vision of what they're trying to do. And when you think about their strategy going forward, this one scares me a little bit. Apple, of course, now has secured the right uh, to the book on Sam Bankman Free. You can guarantee that we're going to have a negative documentary coming to Apple Plus uh, about SBF. Granted, it should be a negative documentary, but let's hope that they understand that they play. There's a lot of good guys out here, and this truly was one of the bad guys. Let's see how it plays out. Grant, just take my, my word for it. We will see crypto thrown under the bus in a big way because of why I think the bigger picture here is Apple can't make money off it. It's going to become more and more difficult for Apple to make money off it. In many cases, if you saw what you can do right there with YouTube TV, they and many makers of apps have started to go off this reservation, including game companies like Epic, etc. We talk about these all the time. And it really is the future. I think this is all changing, guys, and we are in the beginning of it. So hopefully you get a chance to take this, flip it out to Marquez and say, hey, maybe you should really take a look at the bigger picture here on where Web3 is. This is just one of the devices that's going to make and help that reality become real. You know, I'm actually, I, before I bail out, I want to just show, because this is a good statement I think we'll end on. And I'm looking at the, these are the replies from that video uh, in the comments. And the problem is, is that this was a great opportunity for Marquez, not, not to prop up crypto, but to paint the future of what technology could hold. And instead, it became you know, a scenario and a lost opportunity to educate people on really the future of where all of this went. And you can kind of just scan down through these. Most of these people have no idea what is happening around the world today. And that, I think, is the difference between the future of where we are today and the future of where you and our children and their children's children will be in the future. So we're on the right track. Hopefully you guys are going to share this video. And if you're not in our diamond circle, make sure and get in right now. It's another way that we share additional content. It's our email list. And it's also a great way for us to communicate with you around uh, new content pieces and you know research, et cetera, that you get over there on the diamond circle. If you guys want to catch me out there on X, it's just at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath. Thank <laughs> you.